John here, guys, and I am one of the lucky ones that received my HDO2 today. Now, if you are not one of those lucky few, then let me give you a brief overview of my initial thoughts and impressions of this HDO. Let me tell you how it compares to the original HDO and to a lot of the other Fat Shark goggles out there on the market. I'm not going to do an unboxing because it comes with all the basic Fat Shark stuff. Your cleaning cloth, a set of stickers, your hard case. These are very nice and useful. One note is that it comes with the 18650 battery holder case, uh, not the USB plug-in uh, case like the original one. So if you don't already have USB, uh, or I'm sorry, if you don't already have 18650 cells, you won't be able to power this on unless you have some other type of battery. So either stock up on these or get another battery source. I have already taken the initial door off, installed a brand new rapid fire module that I updated to version 1.3 today, and installed the best antenna combination on the market, the VAS Crosshair Extreme and the VAS Ion 2. Uh, first notes off the back is it looks very similar to the original. Uh, HDO2 is signed on the top corner uh, right there. Uh, it has one additional modification to the fan, uh, which is a little like hook for a strap or something like that. I'm not really exactly sure what that is going to be for. Uh, the omission of the fan connector port. Thank goodness. Finally, uh, fan functionality is built in. Um, I noted when I very first saw the images of these and this beautiful, wonderful power button, I was a little suspicious of the position. And unfortunately, I was right about that. Um, in the first five minutes of having these on, I accidentally hit that power button five times. <laughs> no exaggeration, because it's exactly where your thumb is naturally going to go as you remove these. I always remove um, fat sharks with my right hand, of course, because I'm right-handed for one, and also my antennas and other stuff are over on the left. So I always pick it up right here, and my thumb just naturally goes to that spot. So the power button is not defaulted to be able to hit the button and turn the power off. There are certain modes that you can have it for. And the initial mode is that I believe it just turns on the fan and not turns off the goggles. Maybe you have to hold it. Ah, all I know is that every time you hit this on accident, it beeps at you telling you, what have you done? So I was very excited to get that power button, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to use it as advertised because I would have turned my goggles off five different times on accident had I done that. But maybe I'll be able to get used to it. And, and I mean, what, how else can you remove these though? Like, you know, hold it like from the center. I don't know, it's kind of awkward. Um, uh, the other thing that's very, very different is the inside of the goggle, of course. It is all black. There is no more diopter uh, slots. There is a little soft padding on the inside of where your eye kind of would sit. Um, of course, on the bottom, you'll see all the new layout for the diopter, um, not really diopter, but the focus adjustments, which are the longer slide wheels that slides um, each individual lens forward and back. Um, the idea is so that people that require a diopter can now function without having to have those additional pieces. Um, one of the first things I'm going to do is get this in the hands of my buddy Miguel, who wears prescription um, diopters for an astigmatism. So stay very tuned, uh, subscribe so that you don't miss that. We'll see how he does with these goggles. Uh, and then of course you have the traditional IPD adjustments. These are um, enlarged so that you can go further in and further out for those people with different eye spacing um, to be able to accommodate the maximum amount of fat shark users. The other thing that this goggle has um, that it comes installed with are these sort of like they're almost like a little shoulder pad uh, for this goggle and so they come installed right there so that allows the corner of the goggle to um, have a little bit more padding now as they are installed it was too much padding for me it, my face is i guess a little too wide for that but when i took them all the way out um, it made this foam a little flatter than i would have liked uh, and my eyelashes were kind of grazing uh, up against the the actual lenses of these. They're sort of convex, uh, curved lenses. 
And one thing that I initially thought was that since these are adjustable, oh, I can just push the lenses all the way far away from my, from my eyes to get that distance. Well, no, because they are also focus adjustments. If I move them further away, it goes out of focus. So for my eyes to focus, they're basically all the way um, towards my eye. I don't require any sort of glasses or contacts. And so if you do have larger or longer eyelashes like me, um, I may end up having to get the newbie drone foam. Now, when I put these on, I notice that there's zero light leak. So they do fit quite well. Um, I'm sort of blinking now and it's like, it's not really up against my eyelash. I, I don't know. I can't actually tell if it's striking it or not. It's, it's a little closer than I would like. So I might need to get that newbie drone foam. I did not like to use the newbie drone phone on the original HDOs because, um, those lenses were very far back for me. I won't need it to get it all the way, my eyes all the way into those goggles. These are kind of the opposite. The default, um, can adjust in or out. But for me, if you don't wear glasses, the default is very, very far close to your eye. Um, so what I have done is I put these little shoulder pads installed to where they kind of stick out a little bit and they're only pushing out just a little bit. I don't think that's the perfect solution. What I could do is cut the edge off of it. Um, but I think I'll just kind of look for another foam just so that I have this. If I ever move on to another goggle, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll leave a picture of how I have this, uh, in the screen. Now, how does it look? My goodness, ever since the first day I tried FPV, I dreamed of something that could give me this image. 46 degrees field of view, OLED, beautiful, crisp, sharp color rendition. Um, it's just simply beautiful. This is the best goggle experience you can possibly have when paired with a rapid fire and these antennas. Uh, let's go to the field where I'm going to talk you through what I'm thinking as I'm seeing them. But if you're on the fence, go ahead and get them. If you're a freestyler, if you're a racer, I really wait till I get out to a race, wait till some of the racers get out there. I really think it's going to be easy to make the adjustment, but some racers are thinking maybe this field of view is too large. I do know a few racers in town that race with the HD threes. Um, which is 43 degrees. So this is really not much of a difference from that. And I could tell just even a full pack, I was already getting way, way more used to it. So it will take a slight adjustment, but for me, I think the adjustment is faster than adjusting radios. Um, my eyes were getting faster than my fingers get used to a different stick throw. So here we go. I'm here with my brand new HDO2 that I've just unboxed, slapped my rapid fire module in and my antennas and i'm going to power it on for the very first time i'm going to be flying this fusion frame designed by mayday uh, has the run cam racer nano it's also my first time flying this camera so it should all together be a brand new experience for my eyes and let's walk you through how that's going to work got this ready to take off so i'm going to go ahead and plug in the goggles okay i can write away see i need to do some adjustments but the screen's already quite big i'm gonna go ahead and get myself onto the right channel which is f7 through the rapid fire very easy okay now i'm on the right channel and oh my word um so i'm working on trying to get the focus just right the image is very large um if you have long eyelashes it's my eyes are like kind of touching the very front of the lenses in fact just on those couple of blanks i got a few little just droplets of moisture uh let me see if i can move those a little bit further away uh it's a little tricky to move the the ipd spacing um I'm gonna go ahead and start recording on the DVR. It's not exactly clear how I want it. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I gotta fix the IPD. 
I think that's about right. So people that have noted that it looks like looking down a circular tunnel versus a, a square on all the original Fat Sharks, that's very accurate. Could I turn my DVR on? Let's go for a... The colors look really, really good. Um, this The combination of this Run Cam Racer Nano along with... Uh, it's a little windy, guys, so I apologize for that. Uh, along with these gigantic screens. Okay, there's a guy on like a four-wheeler driving by, so excuse that. Uh, the combination of these two things look absolutely phenomenal. Oh, man. It is like, I'm just looking around everywhere, so it's almost a little tricky to fly right now. I'm kind of zigging and zagging. Uh, a lot of people have speculated, are these going to be okay for racing? And at least my first flight, I can tell that it is going to take some getting used to. I'm not used to everything being so large. Uh, I did have the HD2s and the HD3s that I raced with uh, prior to getting my HDO. And I, I do remember thinking, when I got the HDO, the image itself, the OLEDs were beautiful. The colors, the detail that you could see, but I did miss that larger field of view, which you know, now that I have it back along with, I feel like these OLEDs are even nicer than the ones on the HDOs. Um, the color rendition is just absolutely fabulous. The detail that you can see on every little branch and blade of grass is simply beautiful. Uh, wow, I. It's gonna take some getting used to, but I feel like I'll be able to get it no problem. Like even in this half a pack, I'm already starting to get used to it. And my goodness, it looks nice. I think the the reason it's so distracting is I'm looking all over the screen because the colors are just so great. Uh, I think it's debatable on whether a larger or bigger um, screen is going to be better. Ultimately, my thought is that it doesn't really matter that much. Like, you don't want gigantic field of view like you get with a box goggle. But uh, as long as you can clearly see the centermost portion of the track and you run a wide camera lens. So I'm running this with a 1.8 camera lens, so the field of view is very wide. So you're essentially, when you're racing, you're primarily focused on the center of the screen uh, and you do want to be able to see in your periphery gates that are going to be coming up to the side. So you're kind of seeing like, okay, here's my obstacle. I'm going to go ahead and line it up. I can see the next one and the corner. Oh yes. Oh yes. This. This is what I've been waiting for. This is what I've been wanting ever since the first time that I tried FPV. Uh, it's still not digital, but my goodness, this is easily the next best thing. Uh, if you're wondering, is it worth it to upgrade? The HDOs are perfectly usable. They are quite good. Um, I want more racers to chime in what they think, if this field of view is too big or not. But for me, I think I'm going to go ahead and get used to it. The trade-off um, is something that will, anytime you change any piece of your gear that you use to control your quad, whether it's your goggles, whether it's your radio, whether it is anything, um, it's going to require an adjustment period. But I feel like the adjustment period for these, I'm already starting to get used to this. I think it's going to be less of an adjustment than like switching radios. So, wow, I am in love with this view. Uh, the hype is real. I would go ahead and if you have the means. It is so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. Um, go ahead and do it. Uh, but the upgrade cost is, is not that much, you know? Goggle per goggle, you know, maybe like about a hundred bucks altogether which isn't too bad. Um, now, if you're not so lucky at, at getting this for sale, I was able to fetch that much for my goggles because I got them on the market immediately um, once these were announced. 
So I've been flying with some original Omways and some Ishin box goggles in the meantime. Um, goodness, it's just so mind-bogglingly beautiful. The color rendition, uh, this is Rapid Fire Mode 2, which will give you the sort of a flatter color scheme. Um, man, it works outstanding.